How's it going friends and welcome back to the channel. So in this video we are going to be looking at Trumpeter's 132nd Avenger. Now in this video I'm going to be mainly f uh, focusing on the basically the entirety of the internals so the uh, basically the cockpit and some of the kind of like central radio compartment and a little bit of the I think it's the wireless operator in the back and the, and the rear sort of lower uh, tail gunner. We're also going to be looking at, unsurprisingly, an Eddard upgrade kit for uh, for this one. And basically, it's a fantastic uh, bit of photo wetch, but again, it's kind of what you kind of expect uh, from Eddard. So, basically, that's what we're going to be looking at. So, we might as well just jump straight into the video. So, grab yourself a good brew and a bicky, and let's jump straight into it. Oh, of course, yeah, I've, I've had to pull the big guns out for this one because, you know, big model, lots of tea. So I'm going to start this build with the engine. Now, it's a really nicely uh, detailed and moulded engine, but it's missing just a little bit, and that's the uh, harnessing for the spark plugs. So I'm going to add those in. It's going to be quite a relatively simple and straightforward process. I'm also going to attempt to sort of thin uh, this part of the exhaust uh, area out to try and well, attempt to make it look a little bit more realistic and kind of in scale. So crack out the rotary tool and have at that plastic and removing as much of it as possible but be very careful at the same time. This is the area or the time sorry you want to sort of stop where it starts being kind of uh, a little bit opaque. So it's always good to check it with a torch or a light. So moving on to the spark plug and the harnessing. I got myself a photo of a Wright's uh, twin cyclone and it can be a bit uh, mesmerizing and a bit a little bit daunting but you find a bit of a rhythm in it and it, it, it's quite simple and easy um, to do. I use some 5 amp um, fuse wire because uh, it's quite uh, you know manipulative and malleable it's probably the right word um, I think it's roughly about uh, 0.1 of a mil I think um, but yeah if you just get yourself some 5 amp wire um, you know it's nice and thin and it, uh, it's, it seems to be about the right size uh, for these um, so like I said I drilled some small holes in um, I even managed to get it into the, sort of that main uh, harnessing which was a little bit difficult uh, but I managed to get them in and then just quite simply super glue them into place and I think that actually uh, adds quite well with that's actually quite the right wiring uh, positioning uh, to be fair I don't think many people are going to really notice it once it's in its nose cowling but I actually think it's uh, it's quite good uh, and you know really makes that engine you know a lot more detailed so you remember a moment ago when I was milling all that plastic out to make those exhaust stubs look a bit more realistic? Turns out it was a colossal waste of time because those are the exact actual <laughs> exhaust stubs. I did thin them out a little bit, doing it exactly the same as I did before, but you know, live and learn, I should have probably looked at the instructions a bit better. So of course I got an Eddard upgrade kit for this kit and it's gonna make a hell of a lot of difference. We've got stuff with like storage bins, um, you know, straps, uh, parts for the uh, gun turret, and an absolutely stunning um, instrument panel. Um, really nice and crisp. And of course, in you know, 30 second scale, it's really gonna stick out. Now, yes, I know what you're probably thinking. A lot of this stuff isn't going to be seen because a large chunk of it, like these storage bins, are actually in the sort of rear parts. Um, the sort of radio operators uh, compartment and rear gunner most of this stuff admittedly isn't going to be seen but once it's all gone together it's going to look really really nice and to be honest with you I actually do quite enjoy doing this sort of stuff I know it's the age-old question what's the point doing it if you're not going to see it but with doing the channel and you know doing things I feel like I need to sort of make more of an effort uh, when I'm doing these and to be honest with you, I've actually grown to actually really enjoy doing it, uh, even though I know it's not going to be seen. But, you know, you, you do you, basically. It's your model, you do it where you want to. 
Now, I know I've just said this was part of a uh, storage bin. It's not, actually. It's, it's some part of the cockpit. I can't remember what it, what it actually is for. I decided to attempt soldering uh, these parts together because super glue will work, uh, but sometimes over time, you know, it may uh, separate and, and pop apart. So it kind of works a little bit better than it has in previous times. So basically what I've done is I've put some solder flux uh, into that crease, a little bit of uh, solder wire, and with uh, obviously solder and iron, just pushing it up against the, um, the brass part once that heats up it will start to you know warm up that um solder putty and basically the solder itself should just basically kind of disintegrate and spread out and weld the parts together admittedly this again didn't work overly too well so i think i just went in there with the solder and iron and just <laughs> smeared it about um this is the only time i actually attempted uh the soldering uh eventually i will get better at it i think i'm actually using the wrong uh solder wire uh, for this so of course sometimes with these uh you know photo etch and brass upgrades we need to remove uh, some parts so the parts that will need uh, removing are usually indicated uh, as you can see in the bottom uh, square there it says you know cut or file um, so basically just get rid of that and then that leaves space for your uh, photo etch to uh, you know replace that original part i believe most of the time these are more accurate um, than what the kit has molded obviously you know moldings can only go so far so i think sometimes they make them look the best that they can and obviously you know we companies like edard you know they do these nice upgrades uh you know just to make it look uh more accurate so this part in particular had a couple of flash holes in so all i did there was quite simply mark those off with a pencil and uh, drill the holes out and i also thinned them around uh, the edges to make them look um, kind of a lot a bit more realistic and a little bit more on scale um, if you remember rightly this this sort of part isn't actually <laughs> extremely well seen so it probably doesn't really matter um, but you know again you go as far as you want to um, again I could have probably just got away with drilling them out or just drilled them out in a larger size so we didn't have to worry about uh, you know thinning them out so once I was happy that it was all super glued into place as well as all these little extra bits and pieces as well I also had a few extra wires in there for like the you know those sort of instrument radio boxy things um i even had one for the oxygen bottle not quite sure why because particularly down that area you, you're not going to really see that when it gets uh, all buttoned up but one of the things i do love with photo etch once it's all gone in you know and it's starting to look like the photos you know it's that nice little sense of um you know sort of satisfaction achievement you've managed to get something that looks like the photo Now, when I got this kit, it actually came for a few extra uh, bits of uh, brass and photo etch, uh, courtesy of Dave, um, when I bought this kit off him. Um, so, it come with uh, some uh, metal jackets, um, replacement barrel for these machine guns. Now, they're quite nicely detailed, and again, they're not really going to be seen unless you have the wings uh, folded. Um, these are PM Profile Prof Profi Modeler. I think that's how you pronounce it um but they're really really nice you've got the barrel and you've got the calling jacket that just goes around it and you just super glue those into place and all you really need to do then is cut off the um original barrel uh drill a small hole and uh, fit it all in super glue it all together So 
so the one bit that I felt was a little bit lacking uh, around the uh, gun itself was actually the um, ammunition feed. So what I did was is I thinned um, some of it out and drilled out um, the original um, detailing of the rounds. Um, you just use a Dremel just to you know, speed it, speed it up a little bit. And then I cut up some uh, small bits of 0.2mm uh, brass tubing and then all I did was um, you know glue them into the back and uh, you know make them a little bit more 3D and give it the impression of you know some brass ammunition. So as we move on to uh, putting some more of the photo etch parts in it's really easily done as you can see just adding some super glue uh, onto the sort of backing uh, parts of the instrument panel and just sticking the two parts together. Now the only bit that was sort of missing out of this is which I found out I'd have started to do is put the glass uh, bezels um, or giving the impression that there's a glass bezel in there. I found that VMS uh, Flexi 5K CA super glue uh, actually dries extremely uh, clear so I put some of this round into those bezels and just give that impression that there's glass in there because it's going to be quite um, obviously a large model quite an open cockpit and I thought this was a um, good idea to sort of you know add a little bit more to it now I did make a little bit of a slip up I'd uh, spilt some glue a bit further over so I tried to use some debonder to uh, you know try and remove it and it nearly went all wrong which we'll see a little bit later on which meant i would have had to have gone back to the original uh, parts which was this clear plastic part with an acetate backing fortunately i didn't have to use it in the end but as you can see here it just lifted uh, the debonder had lifted all that um you know the photo wedge part so fortunately later on it settled and i didn't need to actually go back to those parts so with the liquor paint, some scratch work, some panel liner, I was able to fit in the photo etch parts afterwards. Obviously it makes it easier than trying to mash all those parts off. So guys, I'm gonna leave you with some uh, before and after shots. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think and what your thoughts on photo etch. But again, I hope you've enjoyed. And if you haven't done so already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. And if you'd also like to support the channel further, there are links in the description down below. So again, guys, thanks ever so much for watching, and I'll catch you again soon.